Amazon. Ji, uh, we have started our last topic that was a uh, human skeleton. Uh, we have seen the whole limb and its basic parts, including a uh, skeleton and a pendicular skeleton. And a pendicular skeleton consists of a total girdle and appendages and pelvic girdle and appendages. This is the all diagram. And a total girdle and forelimb. The total girdle comprises scapula, supra scapula, and clavicle. The clavicle connects scapula with the stomach. Uh, in the pendicular skeleton, it includes all the limbs. Four limbs consist of humerus, radius, and arena, eight carpals, five metacarpals, and 14 phalanges. It is visible in this diagram. Humerus, this is radius, arena, this is carpals, this is metacarpals, and this is phalanges. Okay, this is also visible in this diagram. This is carpal, metacarpal, this is phalanges, 14 phalanges. In this form, <coughs> ball and socket join with the scapula, while at distal end, in this form, in join with the radius and arena. Radius and arena at the distal end form multi stage joint with eight wrist bones called carpal. Here it is visible. That humerus forms ball and socket join with the radius and ulna, <coughs> while radius and ulna at the distal end form multi stage joints with the carpals. Carpals form joints with metacarpals, and at the end stage, this is phalanges, which form the network of our form. So there are five rows of phalanges which are attached to the metacarpals, they support the fingers. So the next is pelvic girdle and hind limb. Pelvic girdle attaches the hind limb to vertebral column. As we have seen that uh, 33 vertebrae are present in our vertebral column and there are four basic regions, clavicle, thoracic, lumbar, and pelvic. So pelvic girdle attaches hind limb to the vertebral column. It consists of two coxal bones, which is formed by the fusion of three basic bones, ilium, ischium, and pubis. We can see these bones. This is the bone of our pelvic girdle, which forms hip joint. This is ilium, this is ischium, and pubis. Okay, is it clear? So, this is all the pelvic girdle, which is formed by the fusion of three basic bones ilium, ischium, and pubis. This is the formation of pelvic bone. So, these are two coxal joints. What is the basic function of this pelvic girdle? It supports the whole pelvic region. So the bones present in the pelvic girdle is similar with the bones present in the pectoral girdle, but uh, the names are a uh, little bit different. But the numbering and uh, you can say the joints which are hind limb consists of one femur and two tibia and fibula. Seven tarsals and five metatarsals and again fourteen filling. And now we can see this uh, number of bones in diagram. One femur and two tibia and fibula. This is the one big large bone. This is leg bone called femur. And here it is tibia and fibula. One femur, <coughs> tibia and fibula. This is again ball and socket joint. This is hand joint. Tibia and fibula form joints with the tarsals. And here are uh, uh, in Polyms, it was carpals and metacarpals. Here it is tarsus and metatarsus, and the finger bones are named similarly phalanges. So, femur is proximal bone which forms a hip joint. It is a ball and socket joint. At distal end, it is joint with the proximal end of two parallel bones called tibia and fibula. Distal end of the tibia and fibula forms a joint with eight tarsals, which are also distally attached to the five metatarsals bones of the ankle. In this diagram, we can see 
here it is tibia and fibula and here it is tarsus and metatarsus and phalanges again this is the femur bone it forms a hip joint with the hip bone and here it is tibia and fibula at the distal end of the tibia and fibula it is jointed with the tarsus and tarsus are again attached with metatarsus distal end of the tibia and fibula forms a joint with eight tarsus which are also distally attached to the five metatarsal bones of the ankles five rows of 14 phalanges of the toes are attached to the metatarsal so again in the feet there are five rows of 14 phalanges 14 rows 14 fingers and the bones are named phalanges of the toes these are attached to the metatarsal <coughs> So the next topic is our joints. What is joint? It is uh, meant by joints occur where the bones meet. All the positions where the bones meet is called joint. So not only hold our skeleton together but also gives it mobility. So at jointed positions our bones are united but it also has in direction movement in different directions. Okay, now we have to see classification of the joints. Joints are classified on the basis of amount of the movement allowed by them into three categories. We have classified our joints into three categories and on which factor it is dependent? <clears throat> it is dependent on three different uh, directions, on, on, on the amount of movement, like how much movement is allowed by these joints. First is immovable joint, second is slightly movable and third is freely movable. As we know, our skull bones, they cannot move. While our uh, some joints, some bones are, uh, can move in little bit movement, like uh, uh, our large bones, while freely movable, our arms and the legs, like including all exoskeleton, <coughs> forelimbs and hind limbs. So, this is a freely move uh, with all division of types of the joints depending upon types of the movements allowed by them. Now we will see the freely movable joints are of two types, hinge joint and ball and socket joint. Freely movable. Okay. So if we see the diagram, there it is our shoulder bone. Okay. This is the shoulder bone and ball and socket joint. So it can move in three directions. Like here it is, it can move in the forward and reverse and in the backward and in the like, circle. It can move in the circle. While hinge joint, it cannot move in three dimensional uh, way. It can move just in two ways, uh, up and down. And third is pivotal joint. As you can see, this is only move in one direction. Okay. This was the one type of movement of the joint. Another type of the movement of the joint is this is based on structure of the joint. Number one is fibrous joints, number two is cartilaginous joints, and number three is synovial joints. First is fibrous joints. These joints are held together by short book fibers immediately connected to the The joints are cut in the skull and they fix the feet into the jaws. So now movement is not dependent depending upon uh, movement is not the factor. Now the factor is their structure. So fibrous joints these are held together by short fibers embedded in the connective tissue. So joints are present in the skull, then they fix the teeth into the jaw. So the next type of structure of the joint is cartilaginous joints. These joints allow little or no movement, like our all the bones, all the joints which contains cartilage. Tail and cartilage form joints between growing bones. As we have seen that there are two types of the cartilage, uh, hill and cartilage and other was fibrous cartilage. Hill and cartilage form joint between growing bones and the bones held together by fibrous cartilage are found between vertically at the point where coxal bones meet in the front of the pallus. Okay. We have seen this causal bone in this diagram. This is causal bone. Okay. So here are joints, they meet. Okay. And here are this the present some cartilaginous joints. This joint allow little or no movement. This is the joint, hip joint. And it, uh, where these joints are present, they are present between growing bones. So, the 
it is to be kept in mind that these joints are present between growing bones the bones are held together by fibrous cartilage the bones held together by the fibrous cartilage are found between the vertebrae at the point okay uh, vertebrae in the vertebral column us jagah par where the coxal bones meet in the front of the pelvis this is cartilaginous joints are present the third type of joint is synovial joint these joints contain a cavity filled with the fluid and are adapted to reduce the friction between moving the in this joint this specialty is a cavity filled with the fluid and adapted to reduce the friction between moving the joint the joint is surrounded by a layer of connective tissue called the breast capsule and the inner layer the synovial membrane joint is surrounded this joint a joint is surrounded by connective tissue called fibrous capsule and inner layer is an outer side is the fibrous capsule and inner layer is synovial membrane some part of capsule may be modified to form distinct ligament holding the bones together so bones are attached to each other with the help of ligaments so some part of capsule may be modified to form distinct ligament so special ligaments are made by these synovial joints and these ligaments held the bones together the joints contain i repeat a cavity filled with the fluid and adapted to reduce the friction between moving joints this is called fibrous capsule and the inner layer the synovial membrane some part of capsules may be modified to form distinct ligament holding the bones together based on the structure and the movement allowed the synovial joints can be classified into two major categories So now this is the type of uh, classification of the joints which is based on again structure and the movement both. Initially it was the amount of movement. First classification was the amount of movement, like how much movement is provided by these joints. First was the amount of movement. Second was the on the basis of structure, and third type was. on the basis of structure and movement okay so the hinge joint and the ball and socket joints are the two major types of joints which are classified on the basis of structure and movement so the first is hinge joint and the second is ball and socket joint hinge joints is allows the movement in two directions these are at elbow and the knees as we can see at our elbow joint and our knee joint these directions are possible in two directions at these joints the pairs of muscles of the range pairs of muscles this is the point to be noted as we all know that in our biceps and the triceps these are the some pairs of muscles which are present with the bones these are arranged in the same plane as of the joint like this direction the joint has uski direction mein it is in the same plane muscles are present in the same plane as of the joint at the end of the each muscle and end point where origin is fixed to the immovable bone on one side of the joint and on the other side of the muscle the insertion is attached to the far side of joint so there are two points one is origin and one is insertion origin is starting point of the joint and insertion is other point so one end of the muscle origin is fixed to the immovable bone and on the other side of the muscle muscles skate two parts in one and other okay one is origin and other is insertion origin is fixed to the immovable bone origin is not movable okay origin is starting point it is fixed to the immovable bone on the one side of the joint and on the other side of the muscle the insertion is attached to the far side of the joint so the next type of joint is ball and socket joint as the name indicates with the ball the joint that allows the movement in several directions the joints have at least two pairs of the muscles here it was pair of muscles here it is two pairs of the muscles are present perpendicular to each other here these uh, muscles are present in the same plane like in a similar direction as that of our joint but these are uh, are in the like in a perpendicular like at 90 degrees okay like the bones and the muscles are perpendicular that they bones are at a 90 degree they provide maximum flexibility 
if joint and shoulder joint are the next uh, the examples of ball and socket joint examples including in this are ball and socket joint so the basic again i repeat the basic classification of the joints is first type of classification is the amount of movement allowed by them so three types immovable slightly movable and fully movable so the second type of classification is based on the basis of structure fibrous cartilaginous and synovial fibrous these are from the skulls and they fix the teeth and they have short embedded which is are connected by held together by short embedded connective tissue second type is cartilaginous which in our case are no movement it is the joints present between growing bones and present at the uh, where the coxal bones meet in the front of the pelvis and synovial these are the outer membrane this is fibrous capsule in the synovial membrane and they are modified to form ligament holding the bones together and the third type is the two uh, directional like the structure and the movement like structure and movement both are the major factors in joint and ball and socket joint this was today's topic tomorrow inshallah we will study our next key formalities of the skin hello